hostilities over. All you need is the rocket experience. What you need is the rocket experience. All you need is the rocket experience. What else is there to say? This year's honoree is everything you've heard. He's an Air Force pilot, an astronaut, an explorer, a moonwalker, a scientist, an author, a visionary, a rap artist, as we've now seen, a true American hero, and probably the leading advocate for future space exploration. Please join me in welcoming this year's recipient of the Spirit Discovery Award, Buzz Aldrin. done so well in front of a microphone, but about all that comes to my mind is being in front of the dinner tonight, because I, I really would like to say uh, a whole lot of things to you tonight. Um, the machine that we uh, flew uh, was indeed a marvel, and, and I think we we owe an awful lot to uh, a number of people. Joe Gavin is still teaching at MIT where, where my thesis there on orbital, manned orbital rendezvous really made a difference in my future. And I think the contributions of uh, Dr. John Hubolt, who sold the idea of lunar orbit rendezvous to Werner von Braun and the science advisor who wanted to do different ways of getting to the moon. But his uh, suggestion was two spacecraft to the moon, land one of them, the other one orbits, and then he has to come up, the other one has, that landed has to come up and do rendezvous. Well, now that decision was made while I was at MIT writing the last part of my thesis on manned orbital rendezvous. <clears throat> no wonder NASA decided that I didn't have to be a test pilot, <laughs> thinking of how to make these wonderful things okay for the future. I mean, okay for now, for people to fly. My, my uh, interest has always been on let's do something better for the future. But I think that uh, uh, here in the museum that really honors so many aircraft and so many pioneering efforts, I'm sure my father flew several times out of uh, Roosevelt Field, Mitchell Field, he was uh, one of the early founders of the Institute for Aeronautical Sciences, IAS, which later merged with the American Rocket Society to become the National Space Society. And I was the chairman of the National Space Society for about four, five years. Uh, I think I have to uh, emphasize uh, a, a few things about the people who flew this wonderful machine that we called the Eagle. Other names came along, not quite as good as Eagle. <laughs> of course, the two of us, Neil Armstrong and I, were just in the right place at the right time in so many ways. In, in our career. The second landing was accomplished by Pete Conrad and uh, Alan Bean. The third landing did not land. 
But the, uh, well, let me skip to the fourth, to the third landing actual on Apollo 14, Alan Shepard and Ed Mitchell. Apollo 15, Dave Scott and uh, Jim Irwin. Apollo 16, John Young and Charlie Duke. And the last landing, Gene Cernan and Harrison Schmidt. But those of us, those 12, were very fortunate to be able to land there. There were other names that I think need to be remembered in addition to the hundreds and thousands of people on the ground, like, like all the people that, that put that uh, lovely spindly thing together. Um, I'm not sure how many of you noticed that when the national anthem was sung so beautifully that, that, that I saluted the flag. It didn't used to be that way. You would put your hand over your uh, heart. But recently, a law was passed that those who have served in the military, the veterans, can give the hand salute indoors uh, when the national anthem or the Pledge of Allegiance is given. And I say that because I'd like to see everyone do that who has served in our military services. For those of you who built the lunar module, I have a hand salute for you. <laughs> four fingers that land, or the four landing gear that landed so successfully on the moon. All of us, 24 that reached the moon, 18 are still alive. I just want those people who did something that fulfill the commitment. We reach the moon. Now, reaching the moon with 12 people and not landing really makes a big difference. The landing of a craft on another object is clearly the most important thing. Now, the media doesn't really think so. They think opening the hatch and walking on the moon is uh, is the main thing to, to be considered. But if you remember, Kennedy said, I believe that this nation should commit itself before the decade is out of landing a man on the moon and bringing him safely back. We liked the last part of that. <laughs> but, but it was to land a man on the moon. Didn't say anything about walking around on the surface but to bring it back. Now, in order to do that, you've got to land. And the people here at Grumman made that possible. And we, all of us in Apollo, will never forget the wonderful things that were done right here near Garden City and here commemorating the museum. I would like to take just a minute or two to tell you about what I think we need to do in the future. 